chapter two. I want to read chapter two of my very good book out later this year. Yeah. Who would pay a hundred dollars for this book in my hand right now? Someone would really pay a hundred bucks? Just come see me later. <laughs> Figure it out. One more chapter and then I'll be done. Uh, let's see, chapter number two. I was once engaged to the richest white woman in the world, Christy Walton, worth about $25.3 billion United States dollars, last time I checked. Uh, heiress to her father's Walmart empire. My side chick was the richest black woman in the world, full of room show, Alakija, worth uh, an estimated 3.2 billion oil and fashion. Full of Russia was bad, not bad as in bad, but bad meaning good, and I love her. <laughs> thing is, I love Chrissy Walk too. Another strange thing, because she had no genitalia. Instead of having sex, I would slowly drag a platinum tennis bracelet across the smooth expanse of skin where her vagina was supposed to be until she achieved orgasm. Sometimes it would take hours, but the pleasure I got out of it was truly immense. Plus, she sucked my dick all the time. For Laruncho, on the other hand, could only get off via sexting, which is the texting about the act of sexual intercourse. So we would lie in bed sexting each other, and then she would suck my dick. The, they knew about each other, and they hated each other, and eventually it had to end with Christy, but as, as soon as it ended with her, uh, as things would have it, Things with Fuller and Shofilla apart. I spent some time in Mexico City after all that, soaking it all up, quote unquote. I had just enough to scrap together for another album to get by for another year, maybe, and that album was No Crew is Superior. <laughs> so, <laughs> those were interesting times. Anyway, I was at the hotel room in Miami watching America's Saddest Girl, a uh, show that I like to watch sometimes. Nikki was kicked off. The last episode and everybody cried. Things were not looking good for Michelle this week and my money was on her getting eliminated. So we'll see. The saddest girl contestant and Mercedes looked familiar. I flipped through my phone, realized she had texted me some revealing photographs a while back. I had spent some time with her in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Great girl, very brave. Some <laughs> terrible trauma had occurred in her life much earlier. She didn't want to talk about it. It seemed to have really shaped her outlook on the world. But hey, I don't judge. I went to my laptop and I looked at the text edit file I had started from my memoir. I realized it was the first line in a song I had written years back, the number called I Need Love. The second single off my uh, second album, Bigger and Deafer, reached number one on the hot R&B hip hop songs and number 14 on the Billboard Top 100. Solid work, one of my favorites, go figure. Chapter three, I'm gonna read chapter three because I'm like, want to leave you with just that. <laughs> uh, chapter three. I flew to Oakland, California on some business. I got into town, ready to Ford Focus, red. Dropped my bags off at the Flamingo Hotel in Berkeley, ate some psilocybin mushrooms I bought from a half-white, half-Vietnamese Berkeley High student from the Taco Bell parking lot down the street <laughs> and spent a few drive few hours driving around the St. KML until I found myself at McDonald's at the South Shore Mall in South Oakland, AKA Dirty Mita. I ordered two cheeseburgers, waited, they had a TV on, it was America's saddest girl. As I had predicted earlier, Michelle had been kicked off. I closed my eyes, remembered a tender moment with Mercedes, considered calling her, thought better of it, looked at my watch, Rolex, <laughs> and ordered uh, oh, I realized I had ordered the cheeseburgers two hours ago, so I went up to the cashier like, typically I don't do this, but she know who I am? And they were like, yeah, hello, cool J. And then I was like, exactly, my burgers are two hours late. They said, so sorry, Mr. Cool J. We'll have your burgers ready in two minutes. Enjoy them on the house. I'm a big fan of your music. I said, thank you, and don't let it happen again. <laughs> now that's how you get things done. My cheeseburgers came me, I ate one wrap, one up for later, got back in my Ford Focus, realized I left my second cheeseburger in a McDonald's, thought of myself up and scraped off. In a few hours, I was driving somewhere up north, Highway 1, carved into a cliff walls on the edge of California, looking over the Pacific Ocean, I was hitting corners at 100 miles per hour, so it was inevitable. I said, inevitable, my bad. I skidded and flew off the highway straight into the Pacific Ocean. I sank to the bottom of the Pacific Ocean, my Ford Focus. My Ford Focus landed softly on a bead, I mean a bed, sorry, of seaweed, and I got out the Focus. Mermaid, squid, octopi, 
striped sea bass, shrimp, and electric eels, they all swim around me, and I swim around looking for the kelp forest and orchids and other various flora and fauna that she had to offer. I considered buying a condo down there. But when I figured, when I figured you know, how it would actually be like if I actually bought a condo down there, I was like, it would be pretty lonely. So I swam to Hawaii, borrowed some money from an old friend, bet on some horses, made enough to stay in a decent hotel room. In this hotel room, I did 500 push-ups, 1,000 sit-ups, and I spent some time on the beach and laid down and I stared at the sun. I heard there are some yogis that learn how to, you know, get all their nutrients in their body that they need to survive by absorbing the sun's light into their eyeballs. So I was like, you know, like, well, they don't eat anything or really do anything at all. They just stare at the sun. And I'm like, you know, I think I believe that. So the human mind is like a powerful thing, right? So. I just sat there, and you know, the sunset, and I stayed where I was, and I was lying on the beach staring at the sky. There's no sun left, it was just nighttime. And uh, there's only 10 stars in the sky. So I looked at the 10 stars, and I'm like, I'm gonna name these 10 stars right now. So I named the 10 stars. Number one, the first star, I named Mercedes. Number two, I named the second star, LL Cool J, after myself, the rapper, LL Cool J. Number three, Folarunsa. Four, Michelle. Five, Christy. Six, Eagle. Seven, Fausto. Eight, Cobra. Nine, Nintendo. Ten, Skywalker. I was pleased. I had made some real progress today. I'm gonna do one more chapter. I think this. this ooh. You guys having fun? All here. Uh, it's great that you guys are having fun. Or lower this microphone a little. Yeah. And uh, do uh, one more little chop tear. Actually, I'm gonna raise it up again, actually. <laughs> that was a little too low. Let's see. Number four. Uh, eh, I don't like that one. Number five. Let's see. Oh, no, 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 number six. Don't worry. Get it later, read the whole thing, you'll like it. Number eight. <laughs> That's where I'm at. Woke up and I was Steve Buscemi. Sniffed a bunch of cocaine, went ape shit, broke everything in a suite, caught the front desk, moved into the suite next door, took a nap. Woke up, I was Steve Harvey. Turned, <laughs> turned on the TV Family Feud Marathon. I watched it for a few hours, comparing my moves and facial gestures to the turns and phrases of those of Louis Anderson. Louis Anderson is a nice enough guy, but he is very ugly. There's no getting around that. Ordered a crystal punch bowl filled with cocaine from the room service. Really went to town on that bad boy, no homo. Jumped out the window, landed on a gator slash croc. Rode that sucker like a skateboard, extra fast. I'm talking very fast. Mommy was one beautiful, big, big, beautiful, beautiful bitch, and her tits was flapping. I was ready. Couldn't tell what time it was. Couldn't tell if it was too bright or too dark outside. Stopped into a store, bought an Oakland Raider snapback. So it was one squinted, like, are you? Steve Buscemi, close. Yeah, I'm Steve Harvey. <laughs> Wow, I could have sworn you were Nicolas Cage. Who? <laughs> what? <laughs> You're not from America, are you? I was born in Colombia. You're real sugar pie. When do you get off, I'll take you on a fucking date. Sure, why not? Will you pay for everything, Mr. Big Shot Hollywood? Why do you think it's, oh, I mean, who do you think you're talking to? I don't know. So I said, well, what's your name? Hey, dog, yeah, yeah, so it's not, oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, next morning went out to brunch, uh, a little bistro, front desk lady told me about uh, a bottle of mimosas, Bloody Mary's, a water from view, friendly, waist stabbed, didn't talk too much, mostly looked into each other's eyes, smiled at the brunch, I hit a croc slash gator for her, sent her on her way. And I climbed into the nearest palm tree and slept there for like three, four days until a kind of fireman woke me up, brought me down. Wow. Well, I pulled a lot of crazy shit out the palm trees, but this just about takes the cake, Steve Lushen. <laughs> Steve Harvey, I corrected. <laughs> of course, of course, my bad. It is too mixed up all the time. Look. <laughs> Look, I'd love to stay in chat, but I have an important meeting to get to. All right, I didn't have an important meeting to get to. <laughs> he said, do you need a ride? I was like, no, I'm well, Help me clear my head. He said, sure, buddy. 
hey, listen, before you go to get a quick picture, my wife will flip out. I said, well, I usually do that, but yeah, sure. He put his arm around, he held up his phone for like 15 seconds. Held so on. I, sp I held my smile for like a true pro, professional. And then after the flash, you know, I had to hide to the out of there. I walked around like, I don't even know, six, six seven hours, I would bet. And so it got dark, dipped into a little saloon, drank 10 whiskey, felt good. Walked through the scrapes, felt like I was on the moon, but less boring. I woke up in uh, bed, and uh, I was Steve Buscemi again. Uh, one more, or am I good? One more. One more chapter. I keep feeling like it's not a good time to end it. I'll figure out to it. okay. Chapter nine, I was speedballing at the Lit Lounge in New York City, nursing a tequila sunrise, I believe. I was half LL Cool J, half Nicholas Cage. Mark Ronson was DJing as a favor to a friend. <laughs> he looked sullen. He was playing Drake, started from the bottom. Great song, beat is very infectious. I like Drake's music quite a bit, but I feel like he says the word nigger a little too much for a Jewish former child star raised in the affluent suburb of Toronto. <laughs> but hey, this younger generation played by a whole other set of rules, who am I to judge? Uh, pornographic actor Ron Jeremy was there with his Asian college-age girlfriend. I saw him next to him for an idle chit-chat, like, love your work, man. He was like, thanks, Brick. You look familiar, do I know you? Yeah, probably. I'm half LL Cool J, half Nicholas Cage. He's like, well, I was like, yeah, man. <laughs> we sat without talking for a while. Mark Ronson was spinning a song by Macy Gray. He didn't recognize the number, but I knew the voice well. Big fan of her breakout single, I Try. Sorry, I'm not taking, uh, I mean, talking much, man. This is me talking. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not talking much, man. I'm on both cocaine and heroin, so I'm jamming pretty hard up here, and I pointed to my head. <laughs> uh, oh, it's all good, brother. I'm just happy to be out of the house. I feel you on that, man. <laughs> you sat for like three or four more songs. Okay, three songs. One, Talking Heads, this must be a play. It's a great song. Woo! Two, Trap Call Quest, Lay Street Relaxation. Yeah, yeah. Number three, ah, oh, MGMT Electric Vehicle. Yeah, oh, nice one. I realized I forgot to ask what Ron Jeremy's girlfriend's name was, felt rude, but it seemed like even rude to do that to ask at that point, so I didn't. Just remain silent. Ron Jeremy stood up and his girl stood up with him. He said, Well, it's been real, but I have to be gone. I said, Of course, man, see you around. He said, no doubt, fam. I was like, stay up. He's like, peace. The uh, bartender gave me a Greyhound and a wink. He said, it's on me. I sipped the Greyhound lazily for a second before a young white woman came up, grabbed my hand, said, let's go to the spot a couple, away, a couple blocks away. One of the guys from the Strokes owns it, she said. I was like, oh, that's a great band. She's like, okay, yeah, let's go. We went to the cool place, we're turned away, and uh, went to get a slice of pizza. I nodded off on drugs, and uh, when I opened my eyes, she was gone. Headed back to Lit Lounge, scene was dead. Mark Ronson had packed up his laptop and skipped town. Coughing old flame, she didn't answer. Went outside, hailed a cat. He said, where to? I said, around. He said, I'm sorry. I said, just drive anywhere with a few hundred dollar bills. Fell asleep and uh, he drove around. Next thing I knew, it was on Staten Island Ferry. Sun was coming up, checked my wallet, it was empty. Walked around Staten Island all that day until it got dark, found a got bench in the park, fell asleep, woke up next morning, very cold, sat in contemplation. <laughs> Chapter number 10, I'm gonna do one more, my bad. <laughs> Keeps ending on too sad of a note, I wanna get a, like an upful, like a nice, cheerful note to end on, and all that I'll be gone, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Chapter number 10, I was Nicolas Cage in the cafe at the Barnes & Noble, drinking a pumpkin latte, it was November, I was reading Dante's Inferno, great book, Actually, I don't know why I said that, it's pretty boring. Uh, gave up on reading, decided to wander around the streets of Manhattan. It was gray and half drizzling. I had my shades on, hoodie up, walked around at a brisk pace looking for it. Stopped to a Dwayne Reed for a red Gatorade, some Inferno flavored Doritos, a new flavor, a little soda for my taste, but nice little zing at the end of the day. Here are four facts about Doritos. One, Doritos were Saddam Hussein's favorite snack while in prison by the United States government. Two, Kim Jong-un's favorite food is Doritos. Three, when the Arch West 
His name is Arch West, the man who was credited for creating Doritos, died his daughter threw Doritos into his grave before pouring dirt on the urn. Four, Doritos have about 50 ingredients, which is totally crazy. I was like, what? That's like, what? A Dorito is one thing. I was at 50 ingredients. Anyway, I walked over to the Hudson River, sat on a bench eating Doritos, drinking Gatorade. A cop approached me and said, say, are you Nicholas Cage? I said, I think so. He said, can I get a picture? I said, sure. He said, okay, hold up. And then he took a selfie, quote, unquote. So I took that selfie with Val, and he said, this is great. I'm going to put this right on Instagram. I said, what's that? He said, a website for your phone. I said, crazy. He said, I know, man, these times. Then <laughs> we stood there zoning out in our own little worlds for like 10 seconds. Then he was like, okay, well, I got to be gone. I was like, toodles. Walked around. Nice. The base. Yeah, base. Walked around the village, uh, found a pair of rollerblades that are my size, so I strapped those bitches on for escape. And around, uh, ended up around the Metropolitan Museum of Art. They let me in my rollerblades because I was Nick Cage. So why well, went they? Took a few flicks with the guards, even. Uh, rolled over to Damien Hurst's The Physical Possibility of Death in Mind. Someone let me snap a pic on my Samsung Galaxy S1. <laughs> the guard moved to stop me, but another guard was like, you, he, you know, stop, fold his arms, lean back against the wall. I rolled over to the Port Authority, caught a bus to Patterson, New Jersey, rolled later around there. Seeing the sights. The leaves were all different, colors and falling and uh, swirling in the wind. It was very beautiful, it felt okay. Is that good? <laughs> Who has $200 they want to buy this book off of me right now? No, it's fine, don't worry about it. All right, see you later. Woo! <laughs>